Hi, everybody. I'm Frank Baxter. I'm a retired uh, financial CEO. I'm an ex-ambassador to Uruguay, but most importantly, for the last 26 years, I've been involved in trying to make education in inner city LA, uh, uh, low-income children uh, better. About 26 years ago, in 1986, I, uh, my wife and I uh, sponsored 51 kids in the I Have a Dream program, which helps them get through school and then gives them a scholarship to college. We got 51 wonderful kids going into, 11-year-olds going into an inner city uh, middle school. And then we discovered very shortly that they were already two or three years behind from where they should be, uh, that the school was dumbing down their education. And we discovered, and they did relatively better because they were in this program than, than their peers, but not nearly as good as they should have, have done. And we discovered that was a citywide phenomenon, actually in California and all throughout uh, our country, all the, all the inner cities, uh, 16 million children were being left out of the American dream. So I wanted to do something about it. I didn't know what to do. I originally uh, started uh, getting involved in a bunch of committees and advocating for this or for that. And I realized the forces of the, of the status quo at that time were just too impossible to deal with. But I discovered charter schools. Charter schools were uh, our public schools, but they are led by private groups, usually nonprofit here in, in um, California support a bunch of them, and then in 2002, a group started a, a new charter management organization called the Alliance for College Ready Public Schools. And we were lucky enough to get a good CEO, get good management. We opened uh, uh, six middle schools and uh, 15 high schools, and virtually all the kids graduate uh, and go on to college. And we just had our first college graduate start teaching at one of our middle schools this last year. And I have to tell you, that the biggest opportunity you could possibly have is to go to one of our graduations to see uh, immigrants, uh, to see their families, and, and see them be, be able to have the, the American dream. Uh, and now we've discovered something that's even better to help them, more children, uh, learn faster. We all know that uh, our schools across the country have been in trouble for a long time. The uh, nation at risk back in 1983 said that we were sinking into a morass of me mediocrity threatening our very people and our very country. That was in 1983. A lot of work has been done to try to make things better. Uh, we're spending more per pupil than almost any, virtually we are spending more per pupil than any uh, country anywhere. Uh, we've hired a million teachers since the, uh, since the 70s. Uh, the, the last administration had no child left be behind, which was, had accountability and, and uh, some transparency. And this administration is doing the race to the top where they're having some pretty good innovations, but it's very prescriptive and only help, helps a minuscule number of, of our students. Basically, the, the needle has not improved in, in many, many decades. And it's, it's just, it's a, it's a, uh, a real shame. There's been a, a lot of excuses. They, they, you'll hear people say, we need more money. Well, there seems to be almost a negative correlation by, between the amount of money that's spent and the, and the results of the children. Uh, that we say, there's no way you can teach inner city kids. The culture is too negative. Uh, the parents don't care. Or, uh, Kids are on drugs, they're disruptive, and there may be a little bit of that, but that's not the, really, the real uh, problem. The real problem is we're trying to fit 21st century students into a 19th century system. It is a 19th century system. It started back in, in the middle of the 19th century. Horace Mann went over to uh, uh, Germany and uh, saw schools that were designed after primitive factories. So the schools that we had then, the schools that we have today, are basically 19th century assembly lines. You group all children by age. You think that they have a lot in common by age. And uh, then you sort of put them through. And then at the other end, they come out and, and hopefully uh, are reading and calculating and, and know a little bit of, a, of American history. That was actually a big revolution back in the 19th century. For one thing, before that, most learning went one to one, which is more effective but not efficient. Now one person could uh, do, uh, lecture to you know, 30 kids or, or whatever it might be. So it's much more uh, efficient. And then about the same time, uh, textbooks came out so uh, students could learn 
uh, outside of the classroom as well. And the McGuffey Reader was printed in, in uh, uh, 1835. But we've discovered something that we think is, uh, uh, is a heck of a lot better. There were also uh, many other, there were attempts to use technology in the 70s. Uh, the uh, Apple started giving the Apple, uh, Apple One. Uh, then with, with the CD-ROMs, et cetera, that came along, there were a lot of good ideas, but basically you had the same 19th century system. It said that if uh, Henry Ford were to come back today, the only thing he could recognize is our public school system. <laughs> the, but uh, the technology through almost all through the 20th century was in tandem to the 19th century system. So you'd have computers around the room, maybe the kids have a chance to use them from time to time. There were frequently very expensive paperweights, and the, or else there was a, there was a uh, computer lab off to the side where, the, where you could teach the, the students to learn technology. Now, in the computer labs, the students are teaching the teachers how to learn tech, uh, technology. But, there, but it, was, it was never integrated. And just recently, in the last uh, few years, uh, there comes an idea of blended learning. And instead of the $60 billion that was sent on, on uh, technology, the separate technology, now the technology and the organization is, is integrating, uh, the, uh, using the technology to leverage, to extend the teacher, to extend the, the human resources. I mean, there's a great line that you never have a valuable human doing a machine's job. And with blended learning, the human and the machines are doing their job uh, just, just right. So three years ago, we uh, started this. Uh, the, this is the old system. Teachers sitting in front of th uh, 30 students, and maybe this student, that student up there are way ahead, and they're bored as can be. And a few back here are so far behind, they're, they're desperate. The teacher is trying to teach uh, to uh, what he or she thinks is sort of the common part. Over here, the students are divided into three groups. We have three groups of 16, and they, uh, this, this group is uh, doing one-to-one -one computing. It's that they're having their own digital uh, tutor. They're learning if, uh, at their level and their speed. This group is sitting in tables of four where they're learning to collaborate. They're working on a project assigned by the teacher. I heard a 10th grade girl last year say, collaboration, that's what life's about. You gotta learn to collaborate. <laughs> if you, if, even if you don't like the people, you have to collaborate with them. And then this group is with the teacher, that, and the teacher uh, has all the data from these two other, these two other groups uh, and can give, act much more like a coach the, uh, rather, than, rather than a sage on the stage. And one of the teachers that switched last year said, you know, I thought I was a good teacher. Everybody thought I was a good teacher. I had no idea how many of these that, that, I, that I was missing. The results have been phenomenal. Uh, the kids, uh, when this started, came into our ninth grade at a fourth grade level on average uh, in math and reading. In one year, they advanced four full grades. But the, the way that their, their personalities are just as important, they, they, because they know every day just about how they're doing, they take an interest in their own education much more than in the past. They spent many hours on their own online trying to catch up. And because of the collaborative experience, they, uh, are, um, they, they learn to help each other. And, they, and because they're going through three different uh, cycles, they, they uh, are saying the day just fl uh, flies by. And I have many kids told me, you know, this is the first time I ever liked school. They're kind of surprised themselves and, that they, that they have, have done it. And it's just, it, it is just amazing. We started with two schools three years ago. Now we have seven, or we're, we're reaching out to, a, 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 will be 11 next year. But in addition to what we're doing, and most of this has been organic. This is what the, when the principals discovered, this is what they, they, want, uh, they want to do. And it's catching on all across the, the, our sit, the city of Los Angeles, the number of charter schools, the district is doing it. It is something where we can turn our state around in a, uh, in a decade or so, it really could be. Now, just the biggest obstacle are political. We, we still have the iron uh, triangle. You, you probably know what that is, the forces of the status quo. But the reality is that uh, technology is inexorable. 
digital learning will dominate our system at some point. But what I want and what I hope that you want is that as many kids of this generation can have it rather than their next to the next. So that, that is my purpose. I hope you make it my purpose. There's a lot to do. Uh, get to know uh, w what your legislature is doing. You can help charter schools. You can help districts. You can lo do a lot of great things. But it's a, it's a very, very noble uh, mission, which I hope you'll join me in. Thank you very much. Oops. Happy kids.